Hi, I'm Christine Davis, and I'm here to talk to you today about practices you can put in place to help pay down any law school debt you may have, or any educational debt, really. While I would never be called a financial expert, I'm simply an attorney by training. I did manage to pay down my law school debt relatively quickly in about 10 years from graduation. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you still have some educational debt, and I'm hoping the practices I used would assist you in paying down your educational debt as well. I will say it is quite a good feeling when you send in that final payment for sure. First off, I will just provide a legal disclaimer. A reminder that the information provided here is for informational and educational purposes only. That means the information should not be considered for legal, tax, investment, or financial advice, and by no means are we creating a client relationship through this program. Paying off your educational debt is by no means an easy task, and it has only become more daunting in recent years. Tuition costs have increased dramatically. Between 2000 and 2012 alone, tuition costs increased an amazing 62% and continue to rise. Consequently, educational debt is ballooning. Nationally, educational debt is at 1.2 trillion, I did say trillion dollars and rising. And unfortunately, Wages have simply not kept up with these tuition increases. I will say there are other avenues for reducing your educational debt through loan forgiveness programs, if you are eligible for those. Uh, I will touch on those a little bit later in the presentation, however. The problem with educational debt is that it grows exponentially. It can become a financial albatross around your neck, impacting your lifestyle and your ability to save for the future. A recent article in the New Yorker magazine in July 2020-22, titled The Agent, Aging Student Debtors of America, chronicled several individuals' unfortunate circumstances. It described a 57-year-old lawyer whose law school debt, which he called his, quote, student mortgage, consists of $84,000. An 81-year-old retired career counselor who went back to school after a divorce and still owes $173,000. Even a 91-year-old elite law school graduate who took out 29,000 at the time to go to school and whose debt has ballooned to 329,000, over 10 times as much as she initially took out. But know that all is not lost. There is no need to panic. There are lots of ways you can climb out of your debt efficiently and effectively. So do not despair. You can and will live a life free of educational debt. So here are my top six tips for paying down debt. One, set realistic and reachable goals to change your money habits. Two, change the relationship between your present self and your future self. Three, pay yourself first. Four, live like a student, at least initially for a while. Number five, don't rely on credit cards. And number six, for each potential purchase, consider how much work time it will require of you. Now I'll touch on each of these tips briefly. Number one, Set realistic and reachable goals to change your money habits. I suggest you accept your past financial mistakes and your current state of finances. You can't change the past, so there is no point in dwelling on it. 
but do consider what's working. If it's working, definitely keep doing it. So you should manage your money going forward by creating buckets. Create buckets such as a bucket for your loan repayment, a bucket for an emergency fund, even a bucket for life happens. And definitely cut yourself some slack. Getting to this point has required a lot of work and it's an accomplishment you really should feel proud about. Tip number two is change the relationship between your present self and your future self. To do this, you need to one, be disciplined and use self-control. Don't let the interests of your present self beat out the interests of your future self. Imagine yourself in the future. Make smart choices by thinking about what your life will be like in say 10 years, 20 years, even 30 years from now. And reasonably limit your consumption. Maybe that means, for example, just going out to dinner once a week at a moderately priced restaurant or something to that effect. Importantly, don't spend unnecessarily. For example, if you are coupled, can you exist on one vehicle between the two of you? Maybe one person can take public transportation. Also consider maybe a staycation instead of a luxury vacation sometimes. Staycation can be very relaxing and restful for sure. Finally, resist temptation. Although discipline is hard, it is definitely worth it. Think of exercise, but don't deprive yourself of everything either. That could backfire like a crash diet. On this point, I came across a quote from 1836 that I thought aptly describes the tension between the present self and the future self. That quote is the following. To abstain from the enjoyment which is in our power or to seek distant rather than immediate results are among the most painful exertions of the human will. While there's no question there's an unequal balance between the present self and the future self, still the future self is way more powerful than you think. My tip number three is pay yourself first. How do you do that? Well, you make repayment of your school loan a priority. Put your repayment of your school loan up there with other essentials like room and board and groceries, that sort of thing. You should also try to pay more than the minimum amount on each of your payments for your loan repayment. It will definitely pay off in the long run. Be what I call repayment strategic. By this, I mean, consider using a debt repayment calculator. For example, there's Credit Karma um, to see just how much you can save by paying additional funds ahead of time. Also, when you receive unexpected funds, consider making additional payments for your loan as well. For example, um, if you get a windfall or a bonus from your job or even an increase in compensation, consider making a payment towards the debt with at least a portion of that money. Now, that being said, do use some of those funds for something you yourself enjoy. Be it a nice dinner out, a ski weekend, uh, a large screen TV, something for yourself. I was always partial to spa treatments myself. My last point is not technically about paying down debt, but I think it's worth mentioning from a financial perspective. Don't forget about automating retirement front funds right from the get-go. They say the first 240 paychecks are the most important in terms of saving due to the incredible power of compound interest. Also, don't leave any additional funds that your employer may provide through employer matching on the table. That's just free money for you. 
if at all possible, try to obtain those additional benefits. So tip number four, live like a student, at least in the early years. This includes your living arrangements, such as your furniture, your decorating. I like to watch HDTVs decorating on a dime. They actually have some very cute decorations. Also, your entertainment. Maybe watch Netflix, binge some really good show rather than go to a Broadway play. For clothes, furniture, even cars, consider used and thrift. There are really a lot of good websites you can utilize these days, including eBay, ThreadUp, Poshmark, Facebook Market, Craigslist. Make use of those. But do look out for fraud and take safety precautions. Also, look for bargains and discounts. Don't forget about coupon apps and purchase sale items when you can. The savings can really add up. I must say, I think I probably saved thousands by using these techniques over the years. Tip number five, do not rely on credit cards. Do not add more debt to yourself by paying with credit. Instead, pay immediately and directly. Through your accounts, your debit card, PayPal, an e-check, maybe even cash. But again, if you're making an online payment, you should be very careful about fraud. Also, for the really large purchases you may need to make, uh, like appliances, furniture, trips, even a vehicle, again, save up for those purchases if you can and look for good bargains for them. Also, I'd say consider old school layaway options uh, where you cut bigger purchases into smaller payments. Um, these were, of course, popular back in the 70s and 80s, um, but they have these type of payment plans available now as well. They've really made a comeback and typically they're available in an electronic format. Also, although some people will likely disagree with me, I suggest being weary of using credit to earn rewards. I'm not convinced the rewards are worth, worth it. First of all, it's still adding unnecessary debt to your plate, which you'll still need to pay off even if it's immediately. Second, there are often hidden costs associated with these rewards programs that sometimes just wipe out the savings entirely. So do be careful with those. My final tip, tip number six, break down each potential purchase into how much work time it will require of you. How do you do this exactly? Well, break down your salary into hourly take home, after taxes, of course. Consider how much time it will take you will have to work to earn enough to pay for the purchase you are considering. Ask yourself, is this really worth my time? Is that trip to Vegas really worth it? And, and maybe sometimes the answer is yes. I'm sure sometimes that would be the answer. I know for my yoga class, the answer is definitely yes. But still, think about it each time. In other words, quote, watch your pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves, unquote. I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the other potential avenues to reduce your educational debt, which I referred to earlier. First, of course, there's the Biden-Harris debt, student debt relief plan. This was announced August 24th, 2022. It is being challenged in the courts, which I'm sure you're probably aware of, but that is still no reason not to apply. Generally, students are eligible for between 10 and 20,000. There is a time limit on the application, however. As of right now, anyway, the deadline is December 31st, 2023. So act now. There's absolutely no reason to wait, regardless of what happens. Also, there are national and state repayment and forgiveness programs. 
Various platforms assist with assessing your eligibility for these programs. For example, there's the Financial Counseling Association of America, which has a website that can offer these services. Also, AARP has a very helpful tool called the Savvy Student Loan Repayment Tool, which you can check out on their website as well. Finally, don't forget about refinancing and consolidation. You can check with your lenders for that. So in sum, here are my key takeaways to help you pay down that educational debt. First, while getting rid of this debt may be overwhelming at first, do not panic. It is doable and not nearly as difficult as it may first seem. Although it may be easier to pretend it's not there and say, well, it'll just be with me for the next 30 years, deal with it directly and affirmatively. Create an intentional plan, as I mentioned, and break it down into smaller goals that are doable and reachable. Don't be afraid to ask questions and seek assistance. It really can be very useful in these circumstances. Know that if you are disciplined, it can be accomplished. My spouse and I had over 250,000 in educational debt. I from law school and he from medical school, and we were able to pay it off within 10 years of graduation while still enjoying life by just following some of these practices. Now, don't forget about the other avenues for reduction of debt that I discussed, including loan forgiveness programs, as well as refinancing and consolidation, and make sure to contribute to retirement funds right from the get-go, if at all possible. Your future self really will thank you. Finally, don't completely deprive yourself, however. You can spend in moderation, and you really should. You're still living your life. In sum, everyone's circumstances are different, but by following these types of practices, you can at least make a large dent in your educational debt while still living a good life and even saving for the future. Good luck on your journey. I know you can do this.